Hey everyone, it's been a while, like a real while, but um, I have so much to share. The Holy Spirit just started moving and I am going to be obedient. First, I was worshiping with my son, um, but before I actually start, I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all that you've been doing in my life and in this new season. Oh, God, you're holy, you're righteous, you're wonderful. Jesus, 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 you're wonderful. King of glory, I lift you up, my rescue, my protector, my lover, my friend. Holy Spirit, come and speak through me and let me release a revelation that you've given me. I thank you, Father, for every bit you've given me and everyone who hears, I pray that you bless them. Bless them, bless their families, Lord, and bless their walks with you and their, give them encounters, Holy Spirit, healing and breakthrough. We bind every hex, curse, witch, and warlock, and we plead the blood of Jesus and seal this word. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, so I was worshiping with my son, and he was, you know, just asking questions like a little one would do, and he was asking about angels and God and um, and it just, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the encounter we had in Atlanta or Alabama when we were kind of surrounded by thieves and God delivered us. And I explained to Israel the power of not only prayer and relying on God, but also the power of worship and most people in the church has really been so focused on how things look. It's more entertainment, but when it's sincere, when it's real worship and it's, um, well, I've talked about this before, but I mean, and it's easy to get into that part of entertainment where you're really just wanting it to sound good, but you're not really focusing on the king. I have gotten in that space where I was like, you know, is it sounding good to you, God? And you wanted to sound good to him, you know, but it's not about that. What worship is, is giving him the glory, giving God the glory. He deserves it every day. But the 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 amazing part of worship is that it it creates a passage that you can enter it creates like a portal that you can go through. And as you close your eyes and you allow your worship to come from the heart, your soul, your spirit, you will experience the encounters of God. So anyways, um, as I was reflecting on how God re re like he literally saved us in that moment by sending his angels and protecting us. I began to get into a deeper worship, which I've been thirsty for because it's been so busy with work and I'm working now. So um, balancing everything has been different and not having the, the time that I had to spend in, or not really, I would say not really putting aside the right amount of time for him, you know, but um, I, I just... I got into a deeper worship and as I was worshiping, I had prayed. I was reading the Bible. We usually read before we go to bed and I'm going to share the word that I got. And the other day, the Holy Spirit was saying, he told me, um, I was washing the dishes. Okay. And I had a fork or something. I like to wash the dishes by my, by hand. And so I had like a fork or something at the bottom of the hot water where I was washing everything and I had to reach to get it in order to finish the dishes. And, um, and as I was doing it, he said, one must go through the fire to release the fire. And I was like, it makes sense. You know, you have to go through to carry, um, and, and he endured for us, right? He went through the fire for us. Um, but also there is a level that we have to walk through. 
and I didn't have the scripture for it, even though I've, I've read the scripture before, it just didn't come to mind. Um, but then tonight when I read it, the Holy Spirit reminded me of a word that I had released on Facebook about when, um, when, uh, those who go through the fire will carry the fire or you must go through the fire to carry it. So I'm reading out of Zechariah 13, seven through nine. And it says, my sword, wake up, attack my shepherd, attack the man who is close to me, announces the Lord who rules me, you know, who rules over all. Strike down the shepherd, then the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against their little ones. Here is what will happen in the whole land, announces the Lord. Here is what will happen in the whole land, announces the Lord. Two-thirds of the people will be struck down and die. But one-third will be left, and I will put this third in the fire. I will make them as pure as silver. I will test them like gold. They will call out to me. I will say, they are my people. No, he says, they will call out to me and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the fire is not for for vain. It's not a vain thing that we go through the testings of God. It's in order to create that bond and that relationship to where we know who he is. And everything we go through gives us a depth. And, and it's something that we can reflect on that is like you cannot take it away. Just remembering and reflecting on how God freed us from thieves, it just brought such a fire in my heart and excitement. He literally released angels on our behalf in a situation we had nothing. We wouldn't have been able to fight these guys. We had a giant toolbox in between us and a baby who was like a few months old. But God allowed us to go through that because he taught us. First, pray, seek my face, then listen and let the Holy Spirit lead you. And then thirdly, worship. And when we worshiped, it changed the atmosphere. And I worshiped loudly. It wasn't like, oh, no, I was worshiping like a battle worship. And so after I was talking to my son and he fell asleep, I came in and I just started worshiping and he, God started showing me other accounts that I had forgotten about where he had rescued us, how he interceded, how he stepped in when we were in the control of others. And even just recently, um, we, we had a situation where God rescued us. So I'm going to just talk about that after I worship. I'm going to worship. And this year I'm going to be worshiping more. I'm going to start dancing and worshiping um, through dance. I love worship and I love hip hop. And um, the hip hop that I listen to and the rap is all on fire for Jesus, all about the Holy Spirit. It's all about God. But I just seeing, I, I have been holding back because I didn't know if it was okay with God. And really it was me being afraid of what people would think um, because the type of music I like to worship to. And also because a lot of people have a religious perspective on music and they restrict the Holy Spirit and they don't really experience the fullness of what God can do through all worship that's pure and true. It doesn't have to sound a certain way in order for it to be worship. It has to be true from the spirit of God. And so <clears throat> God has worked on me and I made a, a, a declaration this year. I will be worshiping through my worship, through my dance. I will be worshiping through my voice and I will give him all the glory through myself in Jesus name. 
So this song uh, was what he gave me as I was worshiping. I started out with There is Power in the Name of Jesus, which I love that song. But he gave me this song as I, you know, when you get deeper and deeper into worship, the Holy Spirit starts to flow through you. And it's not about all the words being right, which, you know, on stage, it's not always like that either. Some people are very in tune with the Holy Spirit and they can go in front of many people and just worship the way they're, they're meant to worship. And that takes the Holy Spirit teaching them because so many people um, can also get distracted on how everything sounds and trying to, um, you know, do the whole entertainment thing. But when the church as a whole can get to a point where worship is complete surrender and it's, it, yes, it's, there's order, but sometimes there's not. Sometimes not every song has to sound the exact same or um, every word has to be perfect. And that's what God freed me from because he showed me that there's more to just worshiping out of everybody else's songs. But he wants us to sing a new song, right? And singing a new song is allowing the Holy Spirit to sing, and that's singing in spirit and truth. So this song started coming through me. And I want to release it. It's just, you know, I'm just going to um, flow and let the Holy Spirit move. So Holy Spirit, go through me and just move freely like you do. In Jesus' name, amen. You are my rescue, Jesus. You are my rescue, my King. You are my rescue. You save me. You are my rescue, you are my peace, you are my rescue, you are with me, you are my rescue, my King, you are my rescue, Jesus, you are my rescue. Even when I don't see you, you are my rescue. You are my rescue. You are my rescue. Even when I can't see, you are my rescue. You are my way. You're my protector every single day. You are my rescue. You are my king. You are the light of my life. You are my peace. You are my rescue, you are my king, you are my holy father, all seeing. You are my rescue, you are my peace, Jesus, you're everything I need. You are my king, my rescue. You are my rescue. You are my rescue. You are my rescue. Holy Spirit, come through. You are my rescue. You are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue, Yeshua, you are my rescue, Yeshua, you are my rescue, every time I need, you are my rescue, Jesus, my rescue, Jesus, 
My rescue lion of Judah, you are my rescue, my rescue, my rescue, my rescue. My rescue, Jesus, you are my rescue, my rescue, my rescue, oh, oh Lord, you are my rescue, Jesus, my So after I was worshiping um, and God showed me a couple more encounters where David and I, my husband, were traveling across country. And the first time we were traveling across, we were going from Utah to Florida, which was like a three-day drive. And um, as we were getting closer to the southern states, we got pulled over and they said that they were looking for a vehicle that matched our description. And um, anyways, it was really just hogwash, but they pulled David out of the car, not in a, like an aggressive way. They just said, can we search the back of your car? And we're like, yeah, go ahead. There's nothing in there. <laughs> and then, um, but I was very angry because they had no reason to do the extra and me myself who has worked in law enforcement myself, I knew exactly what they were doing. It was just a target hit and they just wanted to pull us over to play basically. So as they're going through the trunk, they don't find anything except for clothes. Um, then they start asking me questions about, am I over 18 I'm like, I'm 30 something years old, you know, like really, come on guys. And then they were saying, oh, well, you know, there's a lot of trafficking. Are you meant to be with this guy? I'm like, you know, I understand, but this guy was going way too far and it was like completely disrespectful. And, um, but I, David went out there and he was just talking with the guy very kindly and respectfully. And I just sat in the car as they talked, you know, but I just felt so, I could tell, you know, what was going on. And thankfully, um, there was no issues. They didn't con continue to harass us or anything like that. And then there was another time when we were leaving, I think it was Indiana, but it might've been. I think it was Indiana. And when we were leaving Indiana, we had just gotten on the highway and this officer pulled, I was driving David. Now this is after we had the baby and, um, and David was sitting in the back with the baby to keep him calm. So, you know, you could tell that we're a little family. This guy, he was an officer too, obviously, and he was a younger guy, so he could tell he had a little bit of a power trip going, which I've encountered a few times dealing with officers. But, and listen, I love officers that are good. I love them. But there's all different types of people who wear the badge. Let's be real. Okay? 
And these, this guy was basically on a power trip and he came, there was no reason for him to pull us over. Uh, I was going in the, the right speed, everything. He just, it was another target. And we were in the Southern area. So I think it was, we were getting out of it. We were leaving the South. And anyways, um, we were pulled over. So this guy takes my license. Everything's clean. There's no issues. And, um, and David's sitting in the back of the car with a baby, just waiting. And this guy has me leave my car, okay, on the side of the road. And he tells me to get in his truck with him. Okay, firstly, that is completely unheard of. He and so stupid because if I was somebody who was a threat and he didn't know it, he said, oh, I want you to come sit in the cab with me while I run your ID. A, completely disrespectful. You know what? He, he was playing games. He had me sit in the front seat where his shotgun was, okay? And his dog was in the back, his drug dog, okay? So I quickly looked at him as we're sitting in there, and I said, oh, you've got a dog in the back. I said, we used to use those in our prison when I was working as an officer. Oh, you know, oh, you know about, oh, yeah, I do. I know all about your dogs. I know all about your tactics. I know about your, your, what you're doing right now. It's called an intimidation tact. And he was trying to put me under his intimidation. He was just trying to make me feel scared or uncomfortable or like, you know, just pressure for no reason. He was just being a bully with a badge and it didn't work. Then he felt like an idiot. And I was like, dude, I've pulled out bodies, okay? We've had bodies drop on our yard. You know what I mean? Like, this is what you're doing, and you've probably not seen what I've seen. You know what I mean? Like, he was just acting as if he was like this big shot. And I'm like, let me cut you down a couple notches real quick, okay? So once he knew who I, what I was talking about and that I knew what I was talking about, then he quickly gave me my ID and told me to have a good day and left. But the thing that was so crazy was God was revealing to me as I was worshiping that the fires we go through aren't always for that exact moment that we will know, okay, we're going through this situation for tomorrow. We don't know that. And then, and sometimes we feel like, why are we going through this? You know, what is the point of me going through this, God? Do I have to be um, tested? Do I have to go through this? Well, yes, you do. If I never would have gone through the stuff I went through when I was working at the prison or seen the stuff that I saw when I was working at the prison, when I dealt with the things that I dealt with later, it would have been a different outcome. I wouldn't have had the knowledge or the wisdom or the understanding or revelation that I had because I had gone through, I understood, and I had the fire to release the fire when the fire needed to be released. And it even helps when I deal with people who are being fake. And it's like, I can be fake sometimes um, when I don't want to be rude to people, but at the same point, um, I, I, I don't want to like... I don't know how to explain it. Like I can be fake with people when I don't want to be rude to them and just like cut them off, but I still don't know what God is saying about a person. So sometimes I'll be fake like, huh, you know, like I don't really want to hang out with you or I don't know what God is saying about you. That's me being fake. I try not to be fake. I try not to to be in that space because I really want to walk in honesty and truth. But there's sometimes when I don't really know what God is saying about people. So I'll just keep them at a distance. I'll be nice to them. But since I don't have full revelation of them, I will keep them at a distance and I'll, I'll be nice, but I still don't have peace completely. And I am waiting for God's revelation. So those, those times I can be fake, but there's some people who can be fake snakes, right? Those are people who don't care 
what what you are standing for, who you are, or what you're about, or relationship with you. They're there for disaster, destruction, and they're sent by the enemy. Or they have so much enemy in them that they're being used by the enemy and don't even know it. They can be in the church and they can be um, they can be anywhere. But um, those types of fakes, you know, you have to be really careful because they're snakes. Um, anyways, so I was, I was seeing this, you know, how God has brought us through all these little trials and, um, and how, how faithful he has been to us, um, where it could be so worse. You see these news, um, these news, these news, um, videos and, and, and you're just like, God, you know, thank you so much for protecting my family when the enemy came in and tried to, to do other stuff, you know, even, um, this happened, this, this is a testimony real quick. We were going to go to San Diego to, to my church out there and fire and glory. We had everything planned. We had the resort set up. We had tickets for, you know, to go see Sesame street so excited. And, um, and we were declaring and decreeing and praying and worshiping and believing for encounter, um, while we went, which I knew God was going to do something amazing, which he did, but we weren't actually physically there. But, um, anyways, it got to the day when we were to leave, everything was packed. It was so wild because we had no one to watch our dog. We have two dogs and we had no one that we knew to watch our dogs because we don't have family here. So we don't just, you know, we don't have people that we could just be like, hey, can you just come over and stay at our house for a week? You know, um, usually pay people. Um, But we we had no one. And the night before, I just didn't have a piece of leaving our dogs by themselves. You know, I wanted someone to to be here with them or to check on them. <laughs> there are babies. So that night we prayed, David and I, and we were like, God, you know, reveal to us who you want to watch our dogs, you know, who you want to come into our home, you know. Um, and, and so... We have just recently moved into our new home that God blessed us with. That's a whole nother testimony, but um, I will add a little bit in at the end. Um, But we have just recently moved, so all of our neighbors are new. And God, I was washing the dishes the next morning after we prayed, and God highlighted our neighbor. And he said, that is the person you guys will ask And so I said, okay. And so I asked my husband if he would go ask the neighbor. I told him that I had a vision and God said, that's the person, that's the family will ask. And we did. And they were more than happy to help us. We gave them a key or whatever. And they just, they were willing. So everything was good. We got everything packed. We left. Everything worked good. God even gave me a vision of how to get everything inside the airport without so much stress and chaos. He said, drop your husband off at the door, drop all the luggage right there so you guys can get it in and then go park and then go back. So you don't have to carry everything and it be so, you know, you're trying to balance the luggage and the kid. So, um, it was a God idea. Cause I, we usually just carry everything and it's just a hot mess. So we, I, we did that. I dropped my husband off me and Israel went and parked and then, um, a shuttle came, which was even better, picked us up, took us to the front door. We were ready to go. We went through customs and, and we went through security and believe it or not in security, it was the sweetest thing. My son was like really so sweet to the people. He gave the lady just out of nowhere. God was using him to just love on the service He just hugged the lady who was um, taking our IDs just naturally. I wasn't saying like Israel, give her a hug. It was just like loving. He was just loving on her. And it really like 
it really touched the woman to where she was like, oh, you know, and she gave him a sticker and it just made his, her day. You know, she's used to being looked at as like the bad guy. She's an officer, you know, and she's asking people, you know, to make sure that they're realistic and not trying to <clears throat> do anything bad. But my son giving her a hug, like really just warmed her heart. So then we're sitting at the, um, we're sitting at the, the, you know, the, what is it? We're waiting for the plane. And, um, and, you know, it, I had peace. I had no, no thought that we weren't going to get on, but we didn't get on. The lady came and she said, oh, you know, it's full, you know, um, maybe tomorrow, but it doesn't look very good. And so we were just really bummed. And I was like, well, we're going to San Diego. We're not, we're not going to let the enemy win this. He's trying to hinder this encounter. And I was like, I'm driving. Well, it's 20 hours. <laughs> and we had to get there within a certain amount of time so we could make the church it wasn't like we had all week to drive. It was like we had to be there within a couple days or we were going to miss. So then we start driving. Like I start, I'm like, we're going no matter what. And my husband's like, no, this isn't logical. And I'm like, no, we're going, you know. And he's like, no, nah, it's not logical, Amanda, you know. And um, and I just like felt in my spirit like I, I, this was a fight, a spiritual fight of hindrance. For, because I was really believing for a lot of breakthrough, you know, <clears throat> and I, I had a lot of things that I was believing for that was going to come forth. Well, anyways, um, we ended up getting all the way to Oklahoma City. And when we got to Oklahoma City, my husband was like, let's take get a hotel and sleep and then we'll go in the morning. And I said, OK. And so we we pulled over, we got dinner, we got a hotel, and that night we prayed. And I said, God, if I'm supposed to go, give me a reason, give me revelation, give me a dream or something. And if I'm not, give me a dream. Let me know what I'm supposed to do. In Jesus' name. And I was like, I'm not yelling at you, God. I'm just frustrated, you know, because I don't want him to think my tone was like, I can just talk to him any old way. But I was really kind of like, what do you want me to do, God? Because I really want to go, but I don't know if you're wanting me to go. And so when I fell asleep, I had a dream of an officer chasing me. And when I woke up, and so I was like, okay, God, you don't want us to go. Um, and so we turned around and came back home. But there was still breakthrough. And we listened to church, you know, online like we usually do. And do you know that Sunday that we were supposed to be there, literally angels came into the building on Jeremy and, and Miranda's service. And it was so power filling that it stopped the video. It literally interrupted the service. It was so amazing. And you could see the lights of angels just shh, coming in. And he was actually declaring over someone with spinal, dif uh, spinal bifida. And he was declaring that.